Hello and welcome back to the Suzuki main stage. Now it wouldn't be a dinghy show without the concourse d'elegance, boat of the show. Entries have been submitted and then judged by yachtsandyachting.com's Mark Jardine and multiple Endeavour Cup winner, Ben Saxton. They will now run through the entries and announce the winner. Hello and welcome to the virtual Concours d'Elegance at the RWA Dinghy Show 2021, a virtual event this year. And so we've had people send in their entries via video with supporting photos and words. I'm Mark Jardine, Managing Editor of yachtsandyachting.com and sailworld.com. And for the judging this year, I'm delighted to be joined by Ben Saxton, who is the 2016 Olympic representative in the NACRA 17 class, and also a six-time Endeavour Trophy winner, the champion of champions in the dinghy classes. Hi, Ben. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, I'm honoured to be part of judging this panel. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to it. I love sailing, so let's look at some beautiful boats. Well, thank you very much to, for joining us and really looking forward to seeing what we've got this year. It's been an interesting year for everybody, but it's been great that people have managed to get out on the water in 2020. And we saw participation um, really up for club racing. But for this year at the dinghy, dinghy show, it's been difficult. We're in lockdown and people have found it as a bit of a struggle to present their boats ready for the virtual um, virtual concourse d'elegance. But we're over the moon to have nine entries this year, nine different boats that we're going to be taking a look at. They've each sent in videos and details of their boats. And Ben and I will be looking through these boats and seeing which one we think is deserve, deserving of the concourse d'elegance trophy. So we will start off with a flying 15. This Flying 15 Squall is actually the last Chippendale ever to be built. It was 1155, the sale number from 1968, and is owned by Graham Lohman. And it was actually, when it was built, it was a special commission for Bruce Banks, and it was restored by him in 2019. It's quite clear with a 1968 boat that they've kept a huge number of the original features, just especially looking at those gunnels. Mm. Ben is a Merlin rocket sailor. Um, control lines, but not quite to the level of a Merlin. Yeah, there's plenty of bits of string there. Um, I always try to make the boat I'm sailing have as least the least amount of strings possible. And it looks like this owner has done a similar thing because they've, they've been fairly conscientious of how much rope they have but wow what a beautiful boat so a beautiful Chippendale we were looking at there that um flying 15 and I think to start off this judging uh, a brilliant boat to look at yeah I think it's I think it's a beautiful boat there's uh clearly so much care and love has gone into it um keeping a wooden boat and an old boat looking that good is such an effort so and I think it's great to see the original features. I really like the classic, you know, colour tones of the wood and the white. Uh, and it's got that um, very distinctive, sharp Flying 15 bow that whenever you're doing a handicap race, you're trying to avoid as much as possible. So I think it looks beautiful. OK, now we're going to move on to a K1. This was built, this was built five years ago. It's Hilly King's boat and won the Western Grand Slam, cell number 138. So, starting at the stern of the boat, you'll see absolutely drop-dead gorgeous foils, unmarked hull in a beautiful grey, which is unusual within the K1 fleet, fabulous non-slip in the bottom of the boat, all unmarked. Again, this gives a wonderful... Uh, video of the actual hull itself which is GLP and therefore can be prone to actually scratching but is absolutely unmarked. Really really stunning example of the K1. So Ben we're looking at a K1 there and I have to say very very 
pretty boat in the way that it's presented there and as as um, Hilly said there, looking pristine. But the thing that was missing for me there was character. Yeah, yeah I mean, I like the grey and the white colour scheme, but it was almost a little bit too simple if we compare it to some of the other ones. Um, but it, as you say, pristine condition, someone who clearly loves their boat, and for that we love it. OK, let's take a look at the video. This is Solo Mins, owned by Simon and Brenda Holt. Sale number 4214 is 23 years old and has had one owner since new. Now for 23 years old, I'd say this is looking stunning. Yeah, looks beautiful. I mean, uh, the middle stringer across the floor is actually what just caught my eye, how dark and how shiny that was. Again, this is a beautiful wooden boat. And I mean, the owners tailored it for my liking because I love the color blue. <laughs> I love there just how we had the reflection of the, the grasses on the, on the sand just there on the deck. So that is Solo Mins 4214 from Simon and Brenda Hall. I have to say, very pretty boat. Lovely to see her in the dinghy park. So next we are going to move on to a Wayfarer. This was actually built in 1972, a vintage year for build, my year of birth. And this is a Mark I Wayfarer called Leo, um, um, Ian, Ian Warrillow's Wayfarer, and it's 3195. Right, so this, I'm going to try and keep this short. This is my Wayfarer, Mark 1, 1972. Full rebuild and reimagining. Um, new gel coat in quite a few areas, uh, top sides, and mainly the entire hull was regelled, uh, sanded, and buffed. Furling Genoa, all new gear, all new fittings, new kicker new outhaul uh, two to one and reefing lines reefing points in the sail but mainly it's inside um, the the cockpit area all new floorboards all made by myself uh, new seats recessed tracks new centerboard control lines running aft for genoa kicker spinnaker new self balers all flow coated out underneath everywhere as well so i had the boat upside down for that um uh yeah structurally completely rebuilt uh new tiller new rudder the thing that i really noticed looking through that boat 1972 boat but a lot of the word of the use new yeah i completely agree that had that almost looked like a new boat to me and for how good that is that's fantastic I don't know. I was missing a bit of the classic wood or the wood around the gunnels on that one. Definitely wasn't as polished and shiny as some of the other we've, others we've seen. Now, that Wayfarer is a boat that I want to take on a picnic or playing Swallows and Amazons with. But I think maybe too many new bits. Um, and Wayfarer sailors don't get angry at me. I, the first time I managed to win the Grafton Club Championships was in a Wayfarer. I couldn't do it in anything else. OK, next we are going to move on to a GP14. This is Marland, owned by Andy Tunnicliffe. Cell um, number 14262, built in 2019 by Phil Hodgkins of Ginger Boats. So let's take a look at this. So there we're looking at Andy Tun Tunnicliffe's GP14. And what a well-edited ed video. Yeah, congratulations for, to Andy for producing such a good video. Um, and what a beautiful boat. You can tell that Andy's a racer. Uh, it's a really well-sorted boat, really well looked after. Uh, and it looks like it's in great condition. What a beautiful thing. I know he had that built ready for the 2020 Worlds, which never happened, is now going to be the 2022 Worlds. But a beautiful GP14 and something that's clearly going to be competitive on the water as, as, as well as being good looking. Yeah, well, I think any GP14 in Andy's hands is uh, competitive. But yeah, the boat looks like it's certainly, certainly going to be fast. Again, in pristine condition. Uh, and it looks like uh, nothing's going to break on it because it's had a lot of, a lot of love. 
We're going to move on now to a NACRA 15. Um, now, with your Olympic background, you're very used to the NACRA classes, but this is the 15 single handed we're going to take a look at. And when it comes to professional videos, I think you'll see this one is extremely professional. It's Bob Henderson's boat, who I believe is the UK sales manager. Do you know him at all, Ben? Yeah, I know Bob and most of the guys at NACRA. They're a great bunch. And sailing the NACRA 17s, which you've done for a long, long time. Um, what do you, what's your view on the 15s? And have you taken a look at the class at all before? Yeah, I've um, seen the 15 sailing quite a bit. I think it's a great boat. I think it's a really good transition up into the 17. Not that you have to follow the natural path, I don't think. Um, but I think it's fantastic. And I think it's great the way you can sail it with one person or two people foiling or not. So I think it's great. So there we've seen the NACRA 15, but rather than an entry for the Concourse d'Elegance, I felt a sales video. Yes, but what's the difference? I think it's still a great boat. I think, uh, yeah, another great entry. And it's really good to see the diversity of entries that we've got. I think that's one of the best things about our sport. Um, I do have to say, I think it lacks a little bit of charm compared to some of our other, you know, boats that have been entered but that's the NACRA 15 is the boat that I'd love to go take out for an hour-long blast around the North Sea just like they have there. Agreed and the Concours d'Elegance is about presentation and they certainly presented it well there. Next we're going to move on to an Osprey. This is Sappho, David Downs's boat, um, sail number 73, a Mark II built in 1956 by Bell Woodworking. And David found it in 2016 on a farm in a very dilapidated condition, re restored it for the 2017 Nationals. Well, firstly, I love that this is a rescued boat. How yeah. good's that? That's so, you know, modern, cliche with the modern times, but also, isn't it fantastic? I remember the boat jumble at my local club when, when, uh, when I was a lot younger each year. And this is a fantastic story. Again, we've got the difference in colour between the gunnels and the foredeck, which is a feature we both really highlighted we like. Absolutely. And I can see a couple of replacement panels, but clearly trying to keep as much of the original boat as possible. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with the replacement panel on a older boat. And we've got the uh, the bow stripe across the foredeck that we just saw there that we were missing on one of the other some of the other ones. Um, yeah, a, a beautiful boat. So a beautiful osprey there. Something that the care and attention, the love that must have gone into that. Incredible. Next, going back to the foiling world, and this is the foiling dinghy from Stephen Blake, and it is a boat we've seen a bit of, of before, but this, this is an example of one of the more accessible foiling dinghies that has come onto the market in recent years. What did, what's your view on these boats, these foiling boats that are making it easier for your normal sailor to get up on the foils? I'm such a big fan of it. I think foiling's fun. It feels different. Um, it's, it's a big challenge to master. Um, and I think making sailing accessible is something that's really important. So the problem with, for example, the moth class is it's so expensive and it takes so long to have a boat that you can, um, that actually works. So making sailing accessible and there's other, other companies and boats out there as well, but it's, it's almost a necessity for our sport. And one thing that the country does well is as, as Great Britain, we've got good grassroots sailing from national clubs racing, having fun, you know, cruising, everything, and boats like this that help. Uh, we got to see a bit of the boat there. What do you think of it from a Concours d'Elegance point of view? Um, yes, a beautiful boat. Um, from the, this competition, maybe it's, dare I say, a little simple, but um, I do love that, the top line of that deck. I think that is beautiful. I gotta say, dreadnought bows, they look good everywhere. And um, it, again, that was a video, like with the NACRA 15, 
it made me want to go out sailing straight away. Yeah, I mean, I want to take that boat out and have a sail. And now we're on to our final entry. This is our second Wayfarer, 7688. It's Sotoa, I think, is pronounced. Um, Matthew Sharman's Wayfarer. It was built in 1983 by Porter Boats and has a long history, including sailing at the Outer Hebrides. A beautiful boat. Considering our competition that we're currently judging, the, the word that jumped to my mind was elegant. So there's a good thing. I, I like the dark side sides to the boat and underside. And again, it had the glistening wood on the on the top sides. You 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 could see your own reflection in that, and I thought it was beautiful. And this is about 1983, and clearly used a lot. Um, dinghy cruising, which is such a huge area and an under underrated area of um, dinghy sailing. Yeah, well, when you love sailing, you can race, you can cruise, you can do whatever you like, and you're going to have a great time. So I think it's great to see. And the video itself, really well edited. And if you're going to present a boat out in its elements, of course, difficult for some of the entries in lockdown, but that really did look stunning. Yeah, who didn't want to who didn't want to be on that boat cruising around? I mean, it looks beautiful. It looks like it's designed to work. Um, so yeah, what a what a great video. A very good discussion with Ben Saxton looking at the Concourse d'Elegance videos and deciding on a winner extremely difficult with some really stunning boats there, Ben. Yeah, every single one of them was stunning. Um, I think this is a very hard decision um, and hopefully one that doesn't make us too unpopular. And or, with sailing, one of the things we have to celebrate about it is the diversity of the sport. And we saw some really diverse boats there. Yeah, I think it's great to have brand, brand new boats, vintage boats, foiling boats, cruising boats, racing boats. How good. Well, we found five that really caught our eye there, but it was three in the end, which we decided were just that little bit cut, cut above. Now, in fourth and fifth place, really, we decided were the GP14, um, Marland of Andy Tunnicliffe and the Osprey Sappho of David Downs. What was it about those that you really liked, Ben? It's... I really liked the, the care and the detail that had gone into both of them. So when you looked closely, everything looked, looked fantastic. But also when you take a step back and the first half second of the video that you look at, you go wow in. That's what makes them great. I found it extraordinary, especially looking at that Osprey 2016 as a complete derelict hull and yet racing in the Nationals in 2017, looking in that condition. That was an amazing boat, but we've got some amazing entries, so <laughs> we've had to be hard, and it was so difficult. Yeah, an amazing boat with an even better story. Um, yeah, as you say, it's really difficult, and also I'd highlight really close between these top five. And moving to our top three, let's first of all, that last boat we looked at, the Wayfarer Spatter, um, which we've taken a little look on Google and um, <laughs> means black in Icelandic. Well, I know what I'm talking about, hey? <laughs> Although I hedged my bets. Yes, again, a beautiful boat. Um, I really enjoyed it, as I said. And I think it's practicality. Um, and the, the, the shine of the wood on the inside were the two things that really stood out to me. And also in our top three, um, looking, let's look at the solo, Mins, um, beautifully presented in the dinghy park. Um, what were your thoughts on that solo? It made me want to go sailing. Um, we, we talked a lot about how much, again, we love the contrast between the gunwale and the foredeck and the details of everything on the inside. So they're the two things that, that caught my eye. And I have to say, just looking at it there, the whole way that the boat was presented, 
the reflections on those decks, it really did look stunning. Also the Flying 15, Squall, the last Chippendale, commissioned for Bruce Banks, owned by Graham Lomond. What a beautiful boat from 1968. Yeah, it was the first one we watched, so I didn't know how to judge it compared to the others. Um, but I really liked the classical whites. I really liked the, that bow. There's something about the Flying 15 bow that's beautiful. Mix it with some wood, and I think it was even nicer. And I know you really like the, uh, the side decks, the curved side decks. Absolutely. Just looking at the workmanship that went into that boat originally, and then knowing it's from 1968, you know, this is a boat which is over 50 years old. To mm. keep a boat looking like that and amazing to look at. So with those top three, what a difficult decision we've got. But there was one boat that we both agreed looked amazing and wanted to, we just wanted to get out on the water and it just put a smile on our faces and also a colour that we both like. <laughs> yeah. So this one, I don't know why, it's just, it just was the winner. You don't always have to have a reason why in this subjective judging. Um, so yeah, what, Leah, yeah, just, just stunning. Both in agreement here as well. I have to say, looking at the boat, it did just put a smile on both our faces. We just thought, I want to go sailing. <laughs> and if any boat is going to attract you into the solo fleet, would it be Mins? Oh, well, I don't need attract attracting into a fleet with such grace racing, but do it in a beautiful boat and sure, I'll be there. Well, we have to say congratulations to Simon and Brenda Holt, the owner of MINS and the winner of the 2021 virtual Concours d'Elegance at the RYA Dinghy Show. Congratulations. Many thanks indeed, yes, to all our entrants in the virtual Concours d'Elegance. A difficult time for all of us and we're raring to get out on the water, but so good to see the passion and the amount of time people have put into their boats, put into their entries, ready for this year's show. Yeah, I look forward to seeing as many of you out on the water as possible. We all do. And looking forward to the day we can get back out on the water. Fingers crossed. Thank you to Mark and Ben. And don't forget to take a look in the exhibition halls where you'll find 30 class associations as well as the boat retailers. There are some great activities planned on the stands, including talks, quizzes, and even karaoke on the Osprey class stand. So have a look around and join in the fun. Next up, over on the Knowledge Zone, is Fever and Keelboat coach, Niall Mayant, giving some great tips about how to coach yourself to success when we could get back out on the water. <laughs> 